We have no shortage of really fantastic text editors on Linux. We have some really great text editors available to us as Linux users. Uh, two of my favorite text editors, of course, are Vim and Emacs. These days I'm an Emacs user. I have been for a few years now and I've probably made 40 or 50 videos by now about Emacs. And before that, as a longtime Vim user, I probably made about 40 or 50 videos discussing Vim on this channel. So I've made a lot of Vim and Emacs content, but not everybody wants to use Vim and Emacs because they're kind of deep topics and they have their own peculiarities, uh, especially because you have to learn a set of key bindings and not everybody wants to have to learn a whole new way of typing. Some people just want your standard graphical plain text editor that doesn't involve key chords and key combinations and things like that. And I have discussed some of those editors as well. I've done videos about Genie, which is fantastic. Doesn't have to use Vim key bindings or anything like that, but it is a very nice IDE that comes with a file tree and a mini map and a plugin system and really nice color schemes. I've also discussed Notepad QQ, which is a kind of a Notepad++ clone, but it's available to us on Linux where the standard Notepad++ is Windows only. But today I came across a text editor, a plain text editor, that just blows all of that out of the water. And that text editor is called Light. Excel. So what is Light Excel? Well, you can see from their website here, it's a lightweight, simple, fast, feature filled and extremely extensible text editor written in C and Lua adapted from Light. So there was a previous text editor called Light, which I never used Light. So they took this really simple editor called Light and I guess they extended it to now have more features and it's called Light Excel. And just from the screenshots here, you can see you've got your little uh, project tree your tree view on the side you've got tabs you've got splits there's a vertical split and a horizontal split and you've also got uh, basically a command prompt kind of like you would do like a, a meta X inside Emacs and then launch commands you can do that with light XL and it's got a, a plugin system if I click on plugins here is a github page listing all of the plugins let me go ahead and launch light Excel. So let me launch it here on this workspace and you can see when you first launch it you get light Excel, the version number and it does give you some key bindings. When I say you don't have to learn any key bindings you don't have to learn any key bindings to just edit text right it's just your standard plain text editor like Microsoft Windows Notepad, right? But you could do a control shift P to run a command. So control shift P is basically kind of like meta X in Emacs, right? When we can give it a command, for example, you can see one is called new doc. Let's do new doc and you can see it just opens a new document unsaved, uh, basically an empty file. If you want to actually search for a file, you could do control P. It's kind of like your find file command in Emacs. So control P and maybe I want to uh, open my bash RC and there is the bash RC. It doesn't look like we have any kind of bash syntax highlighting. Well, let's do an another file. So I'll do control P. Let's go to my dot config and tab complete does work while searching and let's search for the qtile config.py and you can see syntax highlighting works rather nicely here in python and you'll notice on the far right hand side i've got a mini map now this mini map is not a built-in plugin for light xl what i did just to see how the third party plugins work let me go back to my web browser here i actually went to the light xl website and they have a FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, and they have plugin recommendations, and they have this group of plugins down here. One of them is Minimap, and if you click on it, it just gives you this page with some source code. It's a minimap.lua, so it's a Lua file. And I just copied this Lua file, and then in your home directory in .config slash lightxl slash plugins, put the minimap.lua. Just drop that file in there, and the next time, you run light excel you will have a mini map you have some quick launcher buttons here for opening a new file uh, saving a file searching for a file finding a file essentially uh, running a command and the settings now of course if you knew key bindings or you knew the uh, commands to run these with the control shift p uh, prompt here you could just type the command but again we've got quick launchers for some of the more common things that you're going to do let's click on the settings because this is interesting the settings is 
uh, uh, incredible. There's a lot of uh, stuff you can actually play here in the settings. For one thing, you have the core settings, such as you know changing some of the user interface. You can set up your spacing and tabs and uh, the, the default line numbers for wrapping, things like that. There are color schemes. For me, I went with one dark, which is essentially uh, one dark, dark one, uh, a doom one. That's all the same color scheme. This is a color scheme I typically use in my Emacs. But you can see you have about, I don't know, 25 or, or 30 different color schemes to choose from. Then you have the plugin section. If I click on installed here, these are all the ones that are already installed. Uh, there's a couple of them that are turned off. Draw white space and trim white space are turned off by default, but you can turn them on if you want. Let's fold that back up. Some other ones, auto reload is turned off. You could turn it on if you wanted. You can see line wrapping here, line wrapping mode by letters or words. I've got the mini map here now because I added that mini map myself, but it knows it's there. And here's some of the settings we could play with the mini map that I added. And one of the really nice things for a user like me, I actually do like key bindings. Now, uh, you, you're not going to get Vim bindings in Light XL. I do think there is a third party plugin that gives you some Vim bindings, like the Vim modes, insert mode, normal mode, things like that. But I'm not going to play with that. But I do want key bindings for a lot of actions. Like I like having that control P uh, for the prompt here for basically finding a file. But you have a million key bindings that are already built in here for you to learn if you want to learn them. For example, I've got four tabs open. I believe you navigate the tabs with the alt key plus a number. So if I do alt one, it'll take me to that first tab, the unsaved uh, document there. Alt two would take me back to the bash RC, alt three back to my Qtile config and alt four takes me back to the settings tab that I was in. Now on their website, you saw in the screenshots that you do have vertical splits and horizontal splits available to you. Th those are key binded and I believe it's, is it alt shift and then HJKL? Let me try it. Alt shift L for right gives me a right split. And from here I could do control P to find a file and maybe, uh, I've got a, a Lua file here, which has nice syntax highlighting. And if I wanted to do this time a horizontal split, I could do Alt Shift and K to split um, up or down. J and K up and down, of course, H is uh, left, L is right. So Alt Shift H J K L for splitting in whatever direction you want to go in. So let me go ahead and close these splits. So this is a, a very quick overview. Again, a million different things you could play with here in the, in the settings for Light XL. One thing I'll say is for a plain text editor, a GUI plain text editor, I think it is a nice middle ground because it doesn't force you to learn the Vim bindings or the Emacs bindings or the Cacoon bindings, you know, all those really extensible, flexible text editors that you really have to spend weeks, if not months, learning, getting used to their way of doing things. This is very much a G-Edit kind of text editor, right? It's got a little bit more going on than something like G-Edit or Kate. Well, I don't know. Kate's pretty full featured these days as well. But what I love about this is it has some really neat power user kind of features with that really fantastic plugin system and all the cool syntax highlighting, the various color schemes. You got your project tree view here on the side. And again, there's a lot of third party plugins out there available for you. It is under active development. It is also free and open source software. I didn't mention that, but over on their GitHub, it is licensed under the MIT license. So for years, I have been recommending people that didn't want to go the Vim or the Emacs route. You just want a regular text editor for years. Genie has been the one I pretty much universally recommend. Go try Genie for a nice text editor slash IDE. But honestly, just a little bit of time I've played with Light XL, I think this is going to start being the non-Vim, non-Emacs text editor that I tell people, go try. And it's not just for Linux. I say go try for, for you guys watching my channel. Most of you guys are Linux users, but it is also available on Windows. It's available on Mac. They've got binary packages over on their GitHub. They have an app image also over on their GitHub. Go 
check out the releases on the GitHub page. For those of you on Arch Linux or Arch based distributions like I am, I found LightXL in the AUR, so I installed it with Paru. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Daniel, Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Royal, Wes, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Methos Nade, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Souls Astray, Tools Devler, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Light XL, it wouldn't have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these wonderful names you're seeing, these wonderful people that help support my work because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.